now I get to introduce our main speaker for today. When I find out that Chad has something going on, I want to go to it because I know that it's going to be interesting, inspiring, thoughtful. And um, his history, he's uh, worked in the advertising business. He's probably roamed these halls for some other thing, uh, maybe work-related, maybe uh, event-related. Um, but he's worked at some of the biggest and the best, most importantly, the best agencies in the world. Um, some that r rhyme with Ryden and Renity, I think, right? Um, things like that. Um, but he's also started his own shop because he's that good. Um, and then he left all of that behind as a copywriter and a creative director uh, to teach. Well, not all of it to behind. He just did it as well as teaching um, at Texas Creative here at a little university, uh, University of Texas at, is it Austin? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's going to tell us a little bit about how he got to the point of now being resigned and, and comfortable and happy in uh, the fact of being an artist. I'll also point out he's really an activist uh, who uses his power, uh, the power of art and words uh, to bring messages in a way that will be far more profound than you ever thought you could think of it uh, and meaningful as well. So um, here to share a little bit about his thinking around simplicity and creativity Please help me welcome to the stage artist, Chad Ray. Hello, good creative morning. Uh, all right. So when um, Ben approached me to uh, speak here today on the topic of simplicity, I just said yes, because that's what I like to do is just see where it leads right um but little did i know that simplicity is fucking hard <laughs> this is version four <laughs> and it took me a couple of weeks of kind of stressing out about this so uh it should actually be called simplicity ish all right so as ben was saying i've i've worn a lot of hats a lot of titles here uh i realized that i've even missed a few um you know, in addition to uh, being an artist, I'm also a host and curator to a property in Lockhart where I live. Um, I bought a house out there a couple of years ago and turned it into an art gallery. Uh, and I also rent Airbnbs there, but um, been doing a little bit of curating and, and inviting other artists to um, do art experiences. There's a, a bunch of abandoned grain silos out there that we're gonna um, do art installations in starting in October. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been, you know, a touring musician. I've been a copywriter. I never was comfortable with the word copywriter because it didn't feel as uh, important as a writer. So I always said writer. I, I trained as an art director at Texas Tech University, uh, but then realized that writers go home a lot earlier. So I chose um, that path. I do design work, although I never really call myself a designer. I think a lot of people look at my work and go, oh, you know, you must be a designer. So I guess I know enough, um, you know, on the computer to, um, to make some design, but clearly not as um, at the level of, of, of my heroes in the design world. I started an agency in, in Los Angeles um, back in the early 2000s and anointed myself as creative director, um, because you can do that when you're an entrepreneur, you can just give yourself a title. Um, and uh, yeah, that worked out for me pretty good. Um, I've had a million side hustles um, and uh, small businesses, including my small ad agency um, in Los Angeles. I've done voiceover work for, you know, uh, Budweiser, Jeep, um, Mopar, um, I've been an advisor to brands, I've directed music videos, I've been a professor for nine years at the Art Center College of Design and the University of Texas. Um, and then of course, you know, now an artist. And none of these titles really felt um, comfortable to me because there wasn't one that just really summed up um, who I was, you know, and I was always like, you, you can't label me. Um, but artist, you know, I, I went to a, um, a workshop on purpose and um, it was at that moment that I really embraced this title of an artist. And I'll tell you why, because an artist um, is basically all of these things. You know, if I were to draw a bunch of circles with each of these titles, artist encapsulates all of those. And, you know, for me, art is, um, 
I can call myself an artist, um, and there's a lot of um, like forgiveness. Um, I can do whatever I want and call it art. You know, design. I feel like oh, there's a there's a level of um, preciousness. It's much more freeing because basically allows you to do anything without judgment. So yeah, this first idea of simplification was really just kind of finding the title that, that worked for me, and that is uh, an artist. And, <clears throat> you know, like a lot of topics, uh, if you've ever given a, a talk, um, usually you get to choose the topic, um, but in this case, I was like, oh shit, I've got a, what is simplicity about, you know? And the first thing is simplicity is a creative act. And what I mean for that is like for a writer, you might uh, learn to write how you talk. And in my case, like a five-year-old. <laughs> um, you know, for an entrepreneur, it's about getting things down to the minimal viable product and simplifying that. For an art director designer, it might be about reducing things, um, you know, and only putting on the page what is was absolutely necessary for the page. Um, the good thing is because everybody's creative, um, simplicity is second nature, right? Like people don't wake up and go, what can I do that's really complicated today? It's our nature to make things simple, to simplify our lives, to simplify products, to simplify messaging. Um, but it's not always easy and it can actually be quite complicated. Um, in many ways, simplicity is a front. Meaning like that is what it appears to be, right? Like tech is really good at this. Um, UX UI is all about making things very simple for the user, but if you look at the back end, it's quite complicated. Uh, art is also like that. You know, I've seen some really amazing art installations, as I'm sure you have, where there might be a room full of, you know, thousands of pennies you know, glued to the ground, and you're just like, oh, wow, that, this is really beautiful, it's really simple, but the process of putting down every single penny is quite complicated, right? And so it's really about relativity and simplicity that's relative both from, like, the maker to the person who's experiencing it to the environment that it's in. Um, so it is a very sort of subjective um, idea, um, this notion of simplicity. A lot of people think of simplicity as um, like a reduction, you know, that you're subtracting things. And so in many ways, simplicity, it's basic mathematics. Um, but I'd like to also offer up that it's also about addition and um, looking at both uh, addition and subtraction. One of my favorite dish definitions for creativity is, is just the basically uh, connecting dots right? Like we're looking at things in culture and we're looking at brands and trying to connect those dots. We're trying to leapfrog our, our thoughts on each other. Have you, have you guys heard of this, this idea of like, I say chocolate, you say nuts. Yeah. Nuts. Uh, nuts leads to, what's a word that, that you think of when I say nuts? Psychiatry. Psychiatry. All right. <laughs> and then I say psychiatry. What do you think of? Shrinking. Shrinking. So this is kind of how our, our mental process works, right? And, you know, if you've ever gotten an assignment or a creative brief, you're, you're looking at connecting these dots and sort of leapfrogging these ideas. Um, and it's those connections of those dots um, that the viewer might also have in their mind that when, they, when you're able to see how they got to that place, that's the aha moment. It's like, oh, wow, I can see how you got to from, from here to here. Um, and that can appear quite simple. People might see something and go like, oh, wow, that's, that's you know, a really sort of simple thing. But the thing about connecting dots is it's always a negotiation, right? Like you're, it's, it's shrinking and expanding. Um, you, you've got to constantly experiment and see what is too simple or what is too hard um, or too complicated or too cloudy. And, you know, oftentimes you can get that wrong. You might think in your mind that you're connecting these dots in a certain way that makes sense to you, but to the most, most people on the other side, 
they might not see those, that connection. And so that's, that's really the art um, when we're making things and communicating is to um, stretch those dots as far as you can without getting too far away, if that makes sense. Uh, and then this last thing that I'll talk about, you know, is just my own sort of personal path um, in simplifying my own life. You know, it's definitely been a, a work in progress. Um, I'm constantly looking for ways to simplify, um, you know, everything from, uh, you know, meditation, which, you know, if you know anything about transcendental meditation, it's really about thinking about nothing. Very simple concept. Very hard to do, you know. Um, but yeah, looking at like all the shit that I do and trying to have a little bit more focus um, and this pathway to an artist, um, it, it just works for me because it's not, um, yeah, I don't feel like I have to wear these like, oh, okay, now I'm an entrepreneur or now I'm a professor. It's like, I'm an artist and everything I do Moving on, uh, this painting here, I know this is uh, a little small. I'm used to screens like this in uh, giant auditoriums. You know, this is a little below me, but... Uh... <laughs> but anyway, this painting I painted uh, over 25 years ago. Um, you know, as a writer, it was always about, you know, using words and not really doing a whole lot of visual stuff. And so um, I just started finger painting like no brushes and just smearing paint on a canvas. And um, I made two paintings around this time, um, rolled them up and they traveled the world with me until I moved to Austin about eight years ago. And it was the first time I had the wall space to actually frame it and put it up. And, um, and when I did, I posted a, this photo and put it on Instagram and um, somebody said, hey, did you paint that? And I said, yeah. And they said, you need to paint more. And it was a friend, it was actually a, a very respectable artist friend of mine. So I went to Jerry's Artorama and bought a bunch of paint and canvas and I started painting. And um, this was right around the time when um, uh, the, uh, the election was happening, you know, and I ended up painting uh, over a hundred paintings in 172 days. And this was the first painting on the left um, that I did. And really, if you, if you, if you kind of dissect it, that started as an abstract painting because I thought like, oh, how could I recreate what I did 25 years ago? But as I was looking at social media and looking at um, what was going on in the news, these faces started to emerge from the abstract paintings. And I just started calling them out and painting around them and that was part of the series that I painted over a hundred paintings and that painting I then posted on Instagram and I got my first solo show um, based off of that painting and so it's just been I haven't stopped since then this is like back in 2017 um, and so this um, series was called Upon Hearing the News and the titles were based on the articles that I was reading that that um, sort of created this visceral um, emotion that I was having at the time. Uh, but then I, you know, I, I, I like to create in collections. And what I mean by that is I'll do a series, I'll get bored of it and say, what else can I do? How can I evolve what I'm, I'm doing? So I'm never going to be the guy that just paints faces or animals or bl blue bonnets. Bless you. Um, I'm always going to be experimenting. And for me, this was the next series. Um, and it was really uh, about simplifying what was here on the page to limiting myself to three strokes down and three strokes <laughs> horizontally and, in, and then doing these outlines. I mean, and I know there might be a little bit more, but that was my, my goal. That was my intention was to simplify this down to, um, to its most simplest form. And so that series was um, why, why the Long Face, and it was all about mental health and awareness um, and then I got bored of that and I'm back to um, my abstract paintings but then I started seeing these animal shapes and I, this was around the time when I mean the world's still on fire 
but um, you know, California and Oregon and Africa, um, Australia, these were all wildfires going on. And so I wanted to use some of these paints, but these animals started emerging and I started putting on top. So rather than um, you know, paint these animals out like I did with the head, I just kind of left it as it is. So it was, again, um, you could argue that I was adding to it instead of um, simplifying. Um, and same here, like not, not really getting too detailed into the, um, to the uh, defined shape, but like looking for things that like, oh, that looks like an eye. Oh, that looks like a nose. Oh, this looks like a match that's on fire. So I'm gonna draw this, this hand here. And this one's called boy with match. Uh, and then I have another one that's like uh, man on fire. Um, so then um, you can see here, as my work starts to evolve, you know, I'm using the same technique that I did for that very first um, uh, Upon Hearing the News um, series. Um, but then I just started um, graffitiing over my work. Um, and part of, part of this, um, and this one says, do what brings you alive, she said, now I'm addicted to cocaine. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, again, like, this is, there's a simplification with this, this face just down to, you know, the X's in the, in the circle. And, you know, you, you could argue that, like, oh, this looks more complicated than the stuff that you showed before. But actually, for me, it was quite simple because, you know, working with so many amazing designers that know all about fonts and typefaces and, uh, you know, their hand skills... Are, are just so amazing and everything I, I tried just didn't live up to my expectations. So I just, I just went, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to scribble, you know, I'm just going to get some graffiti paint and like a child and crayons, uh, just, you know, write in my own way over top of it. And it ends up creating, um, a style that's, you know, about me and, um, unique to me and, and works with my own, um, you know, quote unquote limitations. <clears throat> and then so, uh, then I had this idea of like, fuck, why don't I just make stencils? Like that way I can, you know, I, I, this was what I was attempting to do, just freehand and failing <laughs> miserably. Uh, and that's why I resorted back to that other, that other method. But then I was like, oh, you know what? I can like get on the computer I can design on the computer, I can make stencils and then paint them. And so back to the animals, you know, I was making these, these stencils of animals and printing them on, you know, discarded cardboard. This is from a series uh, called The Gun Show. Uh, that idea came to me after some mass shootings. I woke up at four in the morning with this idea and I just got up and started making it. And that was the first series in a, uh, a long line of um, pieces that I created for The Gun Show. Um, and this is all about, you know, toxic masculinity and using antlers uh, as a symbolism for sex and violence. Uh, and I also kind of like it that it appeals to um, the, the people that we're talking to. <laughs> so, um, you know, these are some more like sculptural pieces that I did that was under the, the gun show. Uh, this says thoughts and prayers. The idea being every time there's a gunshot, that's the response. Um, this was after um, the Parkland shootings um, when middle school kids were um, required to carry see-through backpacks as, as if that was going to solve the, um, uh, the crisis that we're facing. Um, and so this is called Weight of the World. It's got over um, uh, 4,000 AR-15 shells in it. <clears throat> um, but again, you know, I'm, I, one of my sort of quote unquote limitations is I'm not a fabricator. I don't make all of the, the work, you know, like these, I, I bought this decoy gun, you know, I had this made for me, uh, you know, this, I, I bought the bag on Amazon and the bullets from a gun store, you know? And so um, that's just to say that like, we have a lot of these um, voices in our head that say like, oh, well, I can't do that because this is the way other people do it, or this is what art is supposed to be, or this is what design is supposed to be. And you can totally get out of your own way, 
and just simplify the process and start assembling found objects. You know, you don't have to be perfect with anything. You just get it down. And the more that you do it, you're going to find your own style and your own way and your own sort of confidence to move on to the next step. This was a, a, a piece that I made for uh, a show that I called the Vote Show. Again, I you know found this old fire extinguisher, had a motorcycle painter paint that for me. Um, and this was you know this is a book that I published. Um, it's called Oh My God, Guns and Country: The Art and Activism of Chad Ray, 2017 to 2021. So that was you know the first four years of me as an artist and. This was my identity, you know, this, this idea of artivism, um, using my sort of artistic skills and um, activism. And, you know, COVID happened. Um, I, I went inward, like many of you might have done, you know. Um, I, I, uh, I, I enrolled in a um, two-year spiritual psychology program and um, what that program gave to me and gifted to me was um, this idea of, you know, activism is, the, the poster child is a, is a raised fist, right? And it's about judgment and it's about a positionality of, of right and wrong and it's about upset. And as I started going through the program and my heart started opening up, um, and I started seeing the world with compassion and you know, forgiveness and um, really wanting to create a world that was um, a world that I envisioned you know, and less of the, the world that I was experiencing. You know, a lot of times they say that um, your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. And so once I had sort of been cleaning up a lot of what, um, what I had felt, um, I felt disconnected to the work. And I didn't make anything for about a year because I was like, I don't know what I'm fucking doing anymore because I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm not as upset as I used to be. Um, I'm quite <laughs> at peace these days. Um, and then, you know, it came to me that like, maybe there's a different kind of activism and artivism and about spreading joy. And instead of having a shared upset, it's really about a shared joy. And so I, I'd sort of come up with this idea of heartivism. Uh, and that's really what kind of helped me get over this, this, um, this phase of not making work. And, um, you know, I had this body of work lying around that I just was like, I don't know what to do with all this work. I don't feel like putting on another show with this, this work. And um, I just started pulling it all out of, the, out of my storage and just graffitiing positive phrases over it. And so this piece here on the left was part of that toxic masculinity thing. You know, I pulled off the arrow, I flipped it around and just, you know, fuck the algorithm because, you know, it doesn't, it, the algorithm is teaching us this division, you know, and that, that we uh, are more different than we are similar. Um, so, you know, uh, there's still a little bit of angst going on in, in there, but, you know, it comes from a, a good place. Um, you might recognize these styles again. You know, this was back from the upon hearing the news and the stuff I was reading in social media. This is about the, um, uh, the painting is, is about mental health and why the long face. And then again, I just started, like, painting these positive affirmations, you know, right now, need you. You know, and this says, I will treat myself with the kindness of a friend. My imperfections make me unique. I will cherish my relationship with myself, which is, I think, kind of funny uh, with this image, you know. And what, what I realized is it was almost as I was having a conversation between my, my past self and my present self. You know, this time when these two halves sort of came together. Uh, and I was able to like refresh all this work that I had done uh, to a, a, a place that you know I, I really liked, and it actually brought joy to people. Um, this piece on the left, you know, it said "Life is good somewhere." That was during COVID. I was like, "Fuck, man! There's got to be some place in the world that that they're having fun." 
because I'm not. Um, but, you know, again, there's one of these pieces that I pulled out and said, you know, life is actually good here, you know? Life is good. Uh, this is also from the Toxic Masculinity um, series. And, you know, looking at my art and looking at what, what was re-inspiring me, you know? What can I do with a two-headed deer? Um, well, that's pretty magnificent, right? Like, we all are unique, and um, we need to remember that and celebrate that. Um, this is kind of another series, you know, it's funny, like, again, I would have, uh, this might have never been made if I was, like, working on the computer, because it would have never made it to my standards, for, so for me, it was just like, fuck it, it's like folk art, you know, just get and splash some paint down, uh, and be super simple, um, and same here, like, you know, I could try to fabricate this, or I could just buy it and paint on it, you know? Um, so again, you know, it's, it's an evolution of things getting simpler, um, either not using visuals at all um, and just going straight text. Um, this, uh, after, after the, the, the heart of ism work of me graffitiing over some of my activist work, um, I had a show that was called Heart of Ism and, and featured all that work. Uh, and then my next show, which just completed at uh, Preacher Gallery, was called Happy to Be Here and was really just kind of more in line with uh, this inner peace and shared joy and uh, about presence, you know, and not like worrying about shit or worrying about the future or what happened yesterday. Like, it's really about um, now, you know, and so, um, <clears throat> um, this actually feels pretty clean to me, like, you know, like, fuck, that's pretty good, like, for hand skills, right? Uh, I bought a projector, you know, and I'm able to project this stuff now, and um, it's very helpful. So I can get on the computer, project it. These pieces are quite, quite large, this, this one is anyway. That's probably about 36 inches, and this one's... Um, about 48 inches, but um, again, just having some, some fun with some iconic stuff. This piece over here, um, it's, it's pretty large, and it's, uh, it's called Die Happy, and it's made of over 900 motivational stickers. Um, so yeah, if you, if you zoom in, if I, if I had like a professional um, thing, you could, you, could probably, you could probably see that stuff. Uh, but yeah, so, um, again, very simple, uh, at least seemingly simple idea. Um, it took, took me quite a while to get that, that image down. There wasn't a lot of black stickers in, in the pack. And so I was a little worried that it wasn't coming through, but, uh, and then, you know, I started thinking like, well, maybe I just sort of focus on these giant sticker kind of things. So this is a big wooden 3D piece. There's a whole series of, of those sort of cut out things. Um, those, those things, that's pretty, it's rather large, uh, but they feel like giant motivational <laughs> stickers to me. Um, and I also kind of like joke that like, I'm sort of like live, laugh, love, you know, like the punk rock version of that, you know? Um, so maybe you'll see my work at, uh, West Elm or s something someday. Um, <laughs> So, okay, where are we now? So the, these are a couple of other pieces. Um, this is made out of uh, the sort of bug flytrap paper. Um, and those are actual bugs that I, I basically put that in front of my house where the light is for the night and a bunch of bugs decided to, to join my, my art piece there. And it's called What It's Like to Awaken. Because if, if any of you have ever gone through any sort of transformation, you're like, oh, I'm getting my shit together. The shit really comes to you, you know? And so that's kind of what it's like. It's like, oh, I'm out, I'm, I'm free. And then, oh yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, and this piece here, you know, just this idea that, you know, if you believe that we're all sort of energy particles and we're all divine souls, um, you know, and that we're more similar than different, 
you know, this is our sort of uh, chemical makeup as a, as a, as a human being. Um, and so I painted this in my own blood. And uh, so, yeah, if anybody, um, uh, I'm immortalized in this painting. So maybe somebody will, will uh, recreate me someday. Uh, here's a couple of other pieces. Um, you know, my advertising background, you know, is always looking at um, the environment in which your, your message is interacting with the, the user. And so, you know, when we're talking about self-love um, or self-doubt, you know, a lot of times that happens with the conversation that we have with ourselves in the mirror every day. And so looking at like what we could do with mirrors. And so this one says your reflection will always smile back. And so when I remodeled this house in Lockhart, I pulled out all the mirrors uh, and some of them are, are massive um, and painted these, you know, positive phrases. Uh, and then this piece here, it's a large canvas piece. You can't really tell, but it actually slopes off the wall, kind of like a skate ramp. So, you know, actually taking up more space than this, this artwork is, is uh, allowed, so to speak. Um, and one thing I, I've got to say about this, like it, just looking at the mirrors, I remember when I had the exhibition at, at Preacher Gallery, there was a lot of children there and parents going around and, and you know, looking at reflections and explaining what the art was and what it meant. And man, I got to tell you, it was such a different experience for me than somebody walking into a room that is reminding them of what's going on with American gun culture and going like, man, this... I feel like shit, like great job. And I'm like, yes, like success. You know, you felt what I felt. Um, but now that it's like, I feel this, this, this joy and watching people experience that joy and get relief from the world that's, that's going on outside, um, it's a much more joyful experience for me. Um, it's not as if creatives need to, um, have a bunch of trauma to be able to create, you know, I think that's a big misnomer because the ideas are just nonstop for me um, on this positivity train. I think that is really all I've got to say other than, you know, thank you for coming and uh, listening to this and hopefully um, you've got some use out of this and um, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Creative Mornings. Thank you, Johnny Jukebox. Um, it's been a great time. Thank you.